what's up. I've been doing YouTube for a long time now and making video games for even longer. And one of the most common things that I love to do is answer people's questions. All the game developers that are getting started have really interesting questions. And sometimes I get some from experienced game devs just trying to figure something out. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the most recent and best questions that I think will be interesting for you. Let's get started with the first one. This one comes from Ishmael and says, I hope you're doing well. I reached out because of the unforgettable game dev guild you hosted last year, which led me to subscribe for the email. By the way, this is uh, somebody who signed up and sent me an email. If you want to get the emails, I'll put a link down below. Let's skip ahead, though. They said, I'm currently in the planning phase of my end of diploma project, which focuses on machine learning in Unity with a keen interest in application reinforcement learning for game development. Given your deep involvement and expertise and expertise, <laughs> there we go, in the indie game development community. I was hoping you could shed some light on some projects or games you've known that have effectively utilized reinforcement learning techniques. Any general advice or resources you have on the topic would be imme immensely appreciated, and your experience or knowledge would be incredibly beneficial as I embark on this project. I'm going to stop with all the, uh, the nice things about me and just get into the answer. So, for anybody who doesn't know, reinforcement learning for games is when you set up a game that's got a a gameplay loop where you can have the system automatically play it and then either get rewarded or penalized for its play. You've probably seen videos like this before. Unity's done some in the past where they did reinforcement learning of a little Pong table and then you see a little Mario game. And essentially what it's doing is reading, it's applying random inputs and then reading the outputs and trying to get to the best output without really knowing what it's doing. That is very helpful in some types of games, but I can't think of any big commercial project that's actually used it and talked about it publicly. I'm hoping that at GDC there will probably be something about it, but I, I feel like there was one that I remember hearing about with a racing game. I just can't remember the details of it. And in that scenario, it makes a lot of sense because racing, you've got very basic inputs, left, right, throttle, brake, and then your goal is, you know, make it to the finish line first or be the fastest there. And it can learn that stuff pretty easily. Other types of games, I feel like it gets a lot more complicated when you've got a more complex game that doesn't just have a single movement mechanic and all that. So I haven't seen any good examples of this, but I'm going to keep an eye out for them. And as soon as I see one, I will definitely do a video about it. Now let's go into the navigation video that I recently did where I showed how to generate terrain or nav meshes based off terrain. There was a question there, can I do this with a spherical nav mesh? And there's absolutely no reason you couldn't. If you haven't used the new Unity AI navigation stuff, you should go check it out. It's under AI, but it's technically their, their navigation system. It does do wall walking ceilings and all of that stuff. So there's no reason that you couldn't do that at all. The multiplayer video also had some really good questions. One was about if they need to modify the script or if you modify a script, do you need to push up the changes to the dedicated server? In that case, the answer is almost always yes. If you're changing scripts for your multiplayer game, unless they're client only, like it's UI elements and stuff that's only happening on the client, you'll definitely need to update it on the server, especially if anything shared has changed. Otherwise, you're going to get those network config mismatches or, of course, have something out of sync. The other question that was on there was, more of a statement. They said, I need a 30 minute discord call with you to show my progress on the whole matchmaking teams, party lobby and setup I have going on. And they were wondering, um, because I do offer some one-on-one -on -one time in my coursework stuff, if there's anything on the side. And there wasn't until now. I've just opened it up at game.courses slash help if you want to get hourly work or help with your projects. I've been, it's very limited. There are, I think, two left right now and that's it for now i'm gonna see how it goes and if i like it we'll keep going and right now it's cut down to to half price let's go on to the next question though about making videos one thing i want to know your opinion on is what are your thoughts on different types of game dev devlog types and your advice that you would give to people considering getting into youtube with game development this is a great question now this was about the video that i did we're saying that everybody should make youtube videos not everybody but a lot of people should consider it if you've been thinking about it um, there's no reason not to I, at least other than time i guess it, it can it can and will eat up a lot of time but it's very fun it's very beneficial and you get to help people a lot and that's kind of 
kind of the, the best part about it. But now on the advice of what type, I would go with whatever you actually enjoy making. Don't make stuff that you hate making. Don't make things that are tedious and, and not fun to work on, not fun to create and put out there. Make stuff that you actually enjoy and like to work on. Put that out there. It'll one, be much better than the content that you don't love to work on. And two, you, you just won't hate doing it. I've done plenty of content that I just did not enjoy because I thought it was going to be the right thing to do. And it never works out. It's never the right thing. It's always the stuff that I just enjoy that kind of comes off the cuff that uh, it is the best, at least in my my own personal uh, little bubble. I'm sure other YouTubers tell you totally different stuff, but I would say just go with whatever you actually enjoy doing and uh, make sure that the microphone is good. That's by far the most important thing. Next up, there was a question about hardware. This is a video I did a long time ago, but I saw this question and I thought, why not share it? So they've said, can I get some help? There's a good laptop on Costco and it has all the specs in my price range, but has an Intel Iris XE graphic card. Is that good enough for this kind of stuff? And if not, can that be upgraded. No, I would say don't get a, if you can avoid it, don't get a laptop that doesn't have um, a, a reasonably newer NVIDIA card or reasonably newer um, AMD card. Uh, if you if, if the only option is the Intel one, it'll work, but you're going to run into um, strangeness. So you may run into weird shader issues. You're definitely going to have less performance. So that's probably the biggest problem. And I think it's generally better to build stuff um, on those two platforms. But if it gets everything done and your game isn't very graphically heavy, it'll possibly be okay. Now that said, I also want to mention, I do this all the time. I, the laptop that I use is actually super low power and I just remote into this desktop that's right in front of me. That's got a, a 3090 in it and all the power. So I use Parsec and it lets me do all of that stuff with a uh, nice fast performance. And I can do game dev from out in the backyard by the pool or down on the couch or whatever. And it just works fine with a nice laptop that doesn't overheat. So that's all the questions for today. If you've got one, please drop it down below. I will check this. I'll try to type in an answers as quick as I can. And it, ones that I don't get to, I will try to make a video about. And if you're interested in learning more game development stuff, make sure that you subscribe and all that. Uh, feel free to go to game.courses slash help if you wanted to check out that hourly assistance, which is possibly already gone by the time you see this. Um, and then, oh, oh yeah, you can always go to game.courses slash MP, sign up for the multiplayer mastery course. I just released the code for the MOBA game that I'm working on there, and it's in the uh, multiplayer mastery course resources section. So you can go through and see all of that to see the how to build your own game and then the slightly more advanced, uh, like getting in near production ready, working on trying to get it done before GDC. All right, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe and all that stuff.